You are welcome to a new video lesson with Bright Edo. In today's video lesson, I'll be solving various questions that cut across different topics in chemistry, whereby we'll, move, we'll be moving over to the first practice question. And basically, it is on how to determine the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons of an atom okay you can see them here so i'll be basically explaining how the concept work i'll explain first before we solve practice question and i'll give you like the two other practice questions to practice with and you provide the answer in the comment section so we'll go over to the next and we'll be solving 10, 10 questions that cut across various topics in chemistry so let's move over into this aspect meanwhile we have to basically know how to solve questions pertaining to how to determine the pain of an atom because this basically can be regarded to be called the pain of an atom proton electrons and neutron of an atom so how does this work now in the look of things all these atoms here they are neutral so how do we determine the numbers of protons electrons and neutrons for a neutral atom now let's take an example this is x okay this is an unknown atom okay and here is labeled as a whereby here is labeled as z this place that is labeled as a has a name while this that is labeled as z has a name this basically is called the atomic mass what's it called atomic mass and if i don't want to call it atomic mass i will simply call it mass number whereby this that is labeled as z has a name and it is simply called atomic number and if i don't want to call it atomic number i will simply call it proton number okay because we are trying to aim at solving the proton number electron number and neutron number for a neutral atom we have different type of atom an atom can be neutral and also an atom can be charged but due to the question we're having here the atoms they are all neutral okay they are without a charge okay and each charge can be positive charge or negative charge so how do we solve this practice question now let's get into these particular questions now this is a neutral atom and how do we get our proton number electron number for uh, a neutral number for a neutral atom now this must be noted it must be noted that the proton number which is p is also regarded to be called the atomic number this must be noted what did i say proton number is also called atomic number and where is the atomic number located is it not down yes and it is z here by an atomic number is symbolized as z so whatever number we are having here for our atomic number should be our proton number but i already, I already explained here that atomic number is also called what proton number so whatever value we are having down should be called our proton number so whatever value we are having down should be called our proton number meanwhile it must be noted that for a neutral atom proton number equals electron number this must be noted for a neutral atom both of them are the same proton number equals electron so electron number equals proton proton number equals electron so whatever value we are having here should be our electron number well for the neutral number we get it by doing a little mathematics by saying uh, mass number mass number minus atomic number okay mass number minus atomic number that's the formula we used to get our neutron number whereby this neutron number mass number is denoted with the symbol a and atomic number is denoted with the symbol z so our neutron number basically is calculated by saying a minus z a minus z so with all this said let's quickly go into this question and solve i'm going to solve the first whereby you solve the remaining one here and provide the answer in the comment section below for a which is n fourteen seven what becomes our proton number what becomes our electron and what becomes our neutron number very easy remember i said our proton number is gotten from the value down what's the value down here seven and it's a neutral atom because it is without a charge and the electron number proton number equals for a neutral atom so what become here also because it's equal to proton number so what become here seven okay whereby for our neutron number it is calculated by saying a minus z the value of minus value down atomic mass or mass number minus the atomic number so with all this a neutron number becomes what's our a a basically is what is up always 14 and what's our z 
uh, 7, so what becomes neutral number? 7. So you can see how questions like this are being tackled without stress. So with all this said, let's go over to the next practice question. Okay guys, moving over to question number 4. Question number 4 basically is on the topic which is isotopy and relative atomic mass calculations. We already have video lessons on it. On this particular question and you basically do want to go check the video lessons out so understand step by step on how this concept works so you can see basically this question is on relative atomic mass whereby solving questions on relative atomic mass is done by a formula which is simply this I'm gonna write out the formula because we're using it to solve the practice question now which is percentage 1 times mass number 1 over 100 plus percentage 2 times mass number 2 over 100 so what are we to do first of all you know in the other in the video lesson i basically explain every single parameters here but i'm going to say that with my mouth by just like you know saying it out but i'm not going to write it here on the board okay whereby roam means relative atomic mass whereby percentage one means percentage abundance of the first isotope m1 mean mass number of the first isotope you can see one first isotope over 100 plus percentage 2 which is percent abundance of the second isotope because you are seeing 2 there times m2 mass number of the second isotope over 100 so how do we solve this practice question so very easy first of all i'm going to read out the question but before i read out let me quickly write out the parameters in the uh, uh you know in the formula percentage 1 m1 percentage 2 m2 let's see what we are asked to calculate as I read the question, the question says an element X with relative atomic mass 16.2. So the relative atomic mass of the element X is 16.2, contains two isotopes. Okay, X 16.8 with relative abundance of 90%, and X M8 with relative abundance of 10%. Full stop. What is the value of M? Now this must be noted. Relative abundance is also called percentage abundance when we are solving practice questions. So you should not be confused that all the same. So relative abundance is still the same as our percentage abundance, whereby uh, what becomes the relative atomic mass? Because the question now is asking us to get the value for n because this is the second isotope because it was what it was the value called you know last the second isotope. It was not the value called first. So this is the second isotope, whereby this is the first isotope in the question. Meanwhile, everything that is 1 should be ascribed to that parameter, where everything that is 2 should be ascribed to this parameter. So what's the percentage abundance of the first isotope? Then I said that this value reads relative abundance of percentage abundance of 90%. So 1 should be for 90%. And uh, what bit now? Here is M1, which is mass number of the first isotope. Recall in the first question we solved on this, a video lesson, I basically explained that mass number is located up where the atomic number is located down. So what becomes the mass number here? Is this 16 or 8? 16. Mass number is always up. Take note. Whereby here becomes 16. That's the mass number of the first isotope. Percentage of, that of the second isotope has to do with uh, 10%. Yes, because it was the second percentage mentioned. 10%. And here, basically, which is the mass number of the second isotope, is what we are asked to get because that is what is unknown. They say calculate value for M, question mark, and relative atomic mass basically becomes 16.2. Okay, so with all this said, we should impute all the parameters into the formula and get our answer. Whereby the relative atomic mass is 16.2 is equal to percentage 1 value to be 90% times mass number 1 value to be what? 16% over 100 plus percentage 2 value to be 10%, okay, times mass number 2 value, what we are asked to get, let's just make it x over 100. So how do we solve this practice question? So much, very easy. Now watch, here remains 16.2 is equal to evaluating this in our calculator, we have 14.4 plus. Now what you have to do next here is to say 10 over 100. 10 over what 100? 10 over 100 is 0 0.1. And we are having our x, you still put your x there. So 0 0.1 x. Whereby the next step is to CLT, which is collect like terms. Whereby what's re resemble, you bring them to one direction. And this guy 
is looking at like to 60.24 crosses the positive sign it was positive before so at its crosses change to minus so 0.1x will not be equal to 16.2 the 14.4 has crossed minus 14.4 so in the look of things what are we to have here 0.1x is equal to uh this 16.2 minus 14.4 that is 1 Point 0.8 so this particular number here i'm to bring it up so doing that 0.1 x is equal to 1.8 we divide both sides by the coefficient of x i was question of x 0.1 what's the value that's close to x 0.1 so here's 0.1 0.1 this comes to this so what become x value 18 so the value for the m is basically 18 so here should be what 18 okay guys now let's quickly go over to the next practice question okay for question number five you will be solving it and you provide the answer in the comment section below meanwhile for question number six let's go into question number six and seven eight nine and ten so question number six basically explains or talks about the basicity of an acid because it says the basicity of h2so4 is Okay, remember H2SO4 is an acid. So this concept talks about basicity of an acid. And what's basicity of an acid? It is the number of replaceable hydrogen ion. And this hydrogen ion is symbolized as H plus in one molecule of an acid. Now, how does this concept work? First of all, we have to take the acid and dissociate it. We have to break it. Okay, because all of uh, inorganic acids basically contains hydrogen ion. Okay, so this is the acid H2SO4. So in the look of things, let's dissociate it. We already know we have to have our H plus, and also we are to get a radical because of this SO4 here. So here is the radical SO4 2 minus. Our radicals are groups of atoms behaving as a single charge unit or bearing a single charge. And in the look of things, is this reaction balanced? No. For our hydrogen ion, it is not balanced because we are trying to get the number for hydrogen ion and it determines our basicity of the acid. Now, what should be my coefficient of the uh, number that should be attached to hydrogen ion? It is 2 because hydrogen here was what? 2. So we have to balance it. So in the look of things, what becomes the basicity of this acid, which is H2S4, it is 2. So we simply say that this acid is dibasic. Because the basicity was 2. So moving further to the next practice question, which is question number 7. It's still similar to this one we just saw because HCl is an acid also. So breaking this acid, dissociating it definitely, we have to get H plus because all organic or inorganic acids have H plus in them. So you can see the H plus we are having here plus our uh, Cl, which is the chloride ion. So here is Cl minus Okay, and in the look of things, the reaction is balanced. So we're having one hydrogen here, one hydrogen here, one chlorine here, one chlorine here. So in the look of things, let's just be specific. One hydrogen, one hydrogen, one chlorine, one chlorine. So in the look of things, what becomes the basis of this acid it is one. So what will I say about it? Is it dibasic or monobasic now? Monobasic because the basicity was one. Okay, that's how it works. Basically, has to do with the number of replaceable what? Hydrogen ion that is found in one molecule of an acid. Now, moving further to the next practice question, it has to do with the breakdown of glucose. This is glucose with the chemical formula C6H, uh, C6H206. Uh, uh, this basically explains a fermentation process whereby glucose, which is a large molecule, is broken down in the presence of an enzyme called zymase at a temperature of about 25 degrees Celsius. It's going to give us this compound, and this compound here is an alcohol. Okay, plus CO2 plus energy, okay, in the form of adenosine triphosphate, ATP, okay? So the question now says the reaction above is useful in the production of, please, this must be noted, this reaction above is used in the production of ethanol because this alcohol here is ethanol, though there is a reason to why it's called ethanol. In, uh, you know, this basically is explained well in organic chemistry, which I already have video lessons on it, you can check them out. On my channel but i'm going to put the video links to all these particular concepts of questions we've been solving so that going to those video lessons is going to be helpful to you so with all this said let's go over to the last two practice questions which is question number nine and question number ten okay guys now let's quickly go over to question number ten and it is basically on 
acid base and salt and the question says the acid used to remove rust okay this is rust from metals is basically called hcl the most common acid that is used to remove rust from metals is called hcl and the process that you know the process whereby an acid is used to remove rust from metal is called what pickling so this must be noted the process is called pickling okay guys moving over to the last practice question which is question number 10 is going to be an engagement section whereby if you are having any practice question difficult to solve you basically type out the practice question in the comment section and let's see who will be the first person to basically solve the question okay if you're having any question difficulty in solving you basically type it here in the comment section so let's see if another student is to solve the practice question and also i'm still going to walk through some of the questions you'll be uh, asking you are finding difficulty in solving in the comment section okay so that's what will happen for question number 10. now if you find this video helpful you do well to hit the subscribe button to this video lesson and also share these video lessons with your friends thanks for watching